Welcome to 74 Escapes new podcast series, Breaking Bread with Vera Lulu. I'm Vera, and I will take you on a gastronomic journey to explore food as an expression of cultural identity. I'll be hosting chefs and industry professionals from all over the world to discuss everything about this art form that really nourishes our souls. Let's start. On this episode of Breaking Bread with Vera Lulu, I have a privilege to be speaking with Fatih Tutak. After graduating from Mengen Culinary School, he continued to master his craft in Beijing and Hong Kong. Among his prominent accomplishments are working under three Michelin star chefs, Seiji Yamamoto in Tokyo and groundbreaking Rene Redzepi at Noma. After a couple of years in Bangkok, where he held the position as the head chef at the dining room of the house of Seidon, Fatih returned to Istanbul and opened his first restaurant, Turk Patik Tutak, which was named 20 of the world's best new restaurants for 2020. And today, I'm so fortunate to be speaking with Chef Fatih. Fatih, how are you today? Very good. Thank you so much, Vera. Uh, thank you so much for hosting me. Uh, great to meeting you. I think you're connecting from New York, right? From States. Yes, we're in a cold New York City right now. <laughs> yeah. We are looking forward to have some cold days here because today was very sunny so uh weekends i think will be snow coming the second round so the first round was pretty cold and a lot of snow second will be for sure it's going to be strong when it's coming so we have seven or eight hour difference now with evening here and you have a lunch time right? to you or bad news do you love snow i love snow i'm from russia <laughs> uh, Actually, yes or no, um, while I'm living in Asia, actually, uh, the only place I had snow in Beijing, but after Beijing, I always work in the tropical places, so not much snow. And um, yeah, many, many years, actually, I didn't have snow. So, um, but it's okay. If it's not very cold, I'm fine with snow, but when it's cold, I don't like. So I like room temperature always. Not too hot or humid, just room temperature is the best. Uh, I know we both lived in Tokyo, uh, in Tokyo, but have you ever been skiing in, uh, in, in Japan? It's my dream. I've never been in any ski resort. Yeah, mostly Sapporo and Hokkaido is a famous for ski place. One of my yeah. dreams to yeah. go. I haven't, had, I haven't had a chance to go, actually. I would love to one day maybe go to north of Japan. I think it's beautiful. Me too. It's my dream to go drink Sapporo and have Hokkaido sea urchins. <laughs> so you created a dish you called For My Mom, which was your yes. t- from a Turkish dumpling, Manti, correct? Yes, correct, Manti. Tell me about the dish and whether you got your love uh, for food from your mother. Um, actually, there was a moment that I had decided to put on my menu a Turkish dish because, you know, until then, uh, since then, I I haven't cooked any Turkish food, actually. Uh, My restaurant was mainly focusing Asian ingredients and Asian cooking techniques. The food was pretty modern Asian inspired because after living and working in Asia for many years, my cuisine was pretty change completely the mindset was you know asian foods you know i have a lot of inspiration from every city that i have leave i travel and i work with the asian chefs around me but uh, you know the one day i have come with conclusion and decide to remember who i am and where I am come from. That's why, uh, you know, there was a evening, it was a special dinner. So I just, you know, wanted to create a dish basically representing my childhood and where I am coming from. What mom, my mom fed me when I was a child or one of the favorite dish of everyone in Turkey. So yeah, I, I have created a dish um, mantle and I put the name from my mom because this is not an exactly a dish which mom, mom creates or mom used to cook for me but basically it is 
a memories and it is a, a beginning of starting my journey as a Turkish chef to, you know, to find myself in my culinary world. Basically, you know, as a chef, you work many years, so many different restaurants. You start from, you know, internship and you work. And you're trying to find yourself and your style. Yes. Your style. So it's take years and years. And at the end, you know, in terms of my heritage, in terms of where I grow up, where I'm coming from, this is me. So I'm Turkish. This is my culture. And also, there is not many Turkish chefs in the world globally showing our culture and our geography, our cuisine in globally because Turkish food is known as junk food in the world. You know, you're living in the Absolutely. It is, you know, you eat Turkish food after you out, you go out uh, in the bar, club, you eat doner or, you know, this kind of food. It's is it cheap? Chinese. People think Chinese, it's absolutely not authentic Chinese cuisine, which is so complex. Same with Turkish. Uh, and also the restaurants held in the major cities in London, in New York, I don't know, Berlin, even population is very huge in Moscow. If you go to Turkish restaurant, they're very simple. There is no difference than a Dutch Indian restaurant or, you know, simple cheap Chinese restaurant. There is no difference. Not quality. Russian restaurants, all the same also. There is no in the world. But wherever you go, you go to Singapore, you always find a great Italian restaurant or French restaurant or even... Same with you know, Tokyo. I mean, I had better pizza and French food in Japan yes. than I did. Yes, in for some, you can do in Tokyo, you know, even better than Paris. So you can find the best in Tokyo anyway, in Japan. But, um, you know, I have decided to really do something for my, you know, for my heritage. Because if I would continue cooking an Asian food, it wouldn't make a sense. Because there is so many other Asian chefs might achieve this better than I do. And I with you more. Yes, a French chef is a cooking French cuisine. A Japanese guy is cooking Japanese. Leave it to Asia to take something and perfect it in such a way. Uh, I had many fights with Italians who I tried to prove that. I had better pizza in Japan. I had better French food in Japan. I had better bread and baguettes. And there is um, a cute little Russian restaurant that my Japanese friend goes to in Tokyo, which does amazing Russian food. So when you're in Tokyo, it's not just Japanese food or, you know, Singapore. I, they perfect every cuisine at such a level that it's just fabulous. Yeah, and uh, I was going to mention that you're not just restricted to authentic Turkish food because you do use Asian ingredients. And it's really funny because uh, me growing up in Russia, I used to love going to Georgian restaurants and Manti. It was it, yeah, it's well, different because they're bigger. It's almost like Jalambao. It's like a soup dumpling, uh, but it's a dumpling and yeah, it's yeah. universal. It's and my memories are of uh, my grandmother and me and rolling out the dough and stuffing it with, you know, meat. Uh, but uh, because I lived in you know, Japan and I traveled to Hong Kong and I love Asian cuisine. So uh, my interpretation of the dumplings is uh, I do like langoustine ravioli in a dashi with a, with a yuzu. Uh, it's a lighter version. It's more refined, but it's pure and it's less heavy, but it's still going back to the dumplings origins. <laughs> and I think yeah. every, every, every cuisine has their dumpling. The Italians have yeah. their tortellini and brodo or pasta and you know turks have their mantis and russians have their pilmenis so it's 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 a really universal dish yeah and entire asia actually this all silk road has their own dumpling the, you know the mantis come from china actually even dynasty han dynasty it's like yeah. before ancient time so it's old stuff so basically while they're traveling 
from Silk Road to Anatolia and through Istanbul, you know, Manta become, you know, the dumpling become a Manta. It's, it's a stuffing change, depends of the culture and religion who has, you know, Chinese people, mostly they stuff with the pork, but Muslim people, if you go, they use lamb or another ingredients inside. So basically it is a kind of really uh, important dish for each, you know, culture to represent their own mantu and dumpling everywhere in the world. You go Korea, they have their own, you go Japan, they have a gyoza everywhere. So basically I think mantu was one of the best dish that I can start my culinary journey as a Turkish chef for the second part of my life. So yeah, we start with mantu and then um, it's, it's made a big impact and our guests, our loyal guests, who is really dining with us a lot of time and they said, this is you, this is the best dish that represents you and what you should cook for your next chapter. And then I was not sure before, you know, before I start to cook Turkish food again, and I was just thinking why I should cook Turkish food. You know, I want to cook Japanese food. I want to learn uh, cook French food, Italian food, Spanish food, whatever, Scandinavian. But I think there is a huge opportunity and potential to cook Turkish food because there is no proper Turkish cuisine in, in the world and nobody talking, basically. So my aim and my really targets, the main in my target to to make Turkish cuisine proud and worldwide for people. More contemporary, more that, modern. Of course, there is a modern way, of course, but there is actually, besides this, it's not a modern way, it is a new way because many years ago, everything was different. We wear different things, we travel with, horses we travel we, we geography was different climates were different the technology was different everything changed sustainability is really the key element right now well i'm more conscious of how they want to eat the portions and and when somebody says oh this cuisine is heavy like italian cuisine is I disagree, it can be a great portion. You can have a bit of pasta and you can have the fish as an appetizer. And what you're doing with uh, your food, it's kind of like Vladimir Mukhin reinventing the Russian cuisine because people were thinking before it's meat and potatoes and pancakes and caviar and blinis. And, it but it's not like that. It's, it's about taking a bit of the old and making it a little bit new because it's an innovation always. Yeah, you need to be curious and work really very hard because inventing a and cuisine. And we evolve. Yes, it is. You need to have this. Otherwise, it's very difficult. We still need to respect our tradition and our past because past and tradition, it feed us to create new things. But we never play with the old dishes. We never touch them at Turk, basically, in my restaurant. We never touch a traditional dish to make it something different. We always create new dishes that can represent, because I believe thousand years ago, the dish that invented by someone in Turkey or this Anatolia or geography, there was a technology, there was a fire and there was a limited ingredients. So they used their minds to create a dish. So it was very smart many years ago. And then the dish is come through until now. So I'm thinking if we create a smart dishes, it, which is delicious and also easy to people understand and it's tasty. So maybe 20 years later or hundred year later, it will be a classic too. So why we are still eating the same thing all the time? Because 20 dish is just around us. We cook every day, every day, Every week, same stuff. We need some changes in our life. We cannot have always the same thing, you know. We need to show internationally. We have to show the people who like to really visit here and eat Turkish food. 
our cuisine is not only about kebab or doner or some couple of dishes that you know everybody know so we need to do something different that's why i need a people who understand i need people who appreciate what we do we don't do something very complicated here we cook food which is the important things for us has to be super tasty okay so when you dine in my restaurant you have to plan when you can come again so that's why this is not a just experimental one-time restaurant it is a restaurant to play with your minds and make your memories and share with your friends it is an experience which you never forget so this is turk actually we don't cook only food that's why we cannot do takeaway food or delivery we have to yeah you have to dine at turk yeah you have to touch i can't to, i can't wait <laughs> after the pandemic is yeah. over <laughs> Um, so Tokyo has played a huge role in your life, uh, like it did in mine. You happen to work, uh, you know, under one of the, the best uh, chefs. Can you tell me what it was like uh, working with Meiji San? Was he good to you? <laughs> yes, Yamamoto San. Uh, <laughs> at the beginning, I scared from him a lot because he's a very tough chef, very uh, very tough he's chef. Japanese. Because <laughs> we, we, we start at uh, 12 o'clock lunchtime. We start work in Japan, in Tokyo, because we only serve dinner. And he always come to work like 7 p.m. or something. So he come the service time only. Really? The day, yes. The, the, during the day, you never see Yamamoto sir. So he come at 7 p.m. and then somebody bring his jacket and he just straight into service and then he left from restaurant at 3 a.m and go to market you know? yes he 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 stay after service and sit down he drink and he i think the most uh you said he drink what yeah he, drink, he eats and he research i think one of the most, uh, you know, creative times of his day was the midnight. So I never see him during the day. And uh, he's so perfectionist because, you know, at, you know, firstly, he's a Japanese and he's one of the best Japanese chef in the world. And I think he's one of the, the most creative and inventive, you know, chef who really made Japanese cuisine uh more famous than ever because he know the tradition cuisine very well he know how to make a dashi which is stock simple basic stock of dashi very good but he adds a lot of other attention and details to make it even more perfect and the way they do like? sorry what would be the extra that made made his dashi much better than the other chefs yeah you know basically the, the dashi the recipe and ratio is always standard wherever you go in japan in the restaurant in a good restaurant everybody use the same ratio same temperature right but the way he do is some other stuff and some other umami ingredients that he adds and also he used in a different way. It's not only dashi, the many other things to make it edible and also, you know, serving the dishes, which is, it is classic Japanese food, but another way around. So you always feel the taste of Japan, but at the same time, you see the, the modernism and also creativity, smartness of the dishes. So every dish you eat, you taste, you amaze. So you never say one dish, oh, that one was so-so, okay. No, there is no okay dish in Ruyugin. Everything from beginning to the end was just perfection. I don't know if you know, but I worked with Zayu Hasegawa, but we okay, started- I cooked with him at 
<laughs> we started our day at nine o'clock in the morning and we went home at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is fabulous and he yeah. is such a fun chef to work with. He's yeah. very untraditional Japanese because he's so quirky and fun and he's a perfectionist, just like, yeah. um, yes. you know, your, your master. But um, yeah. it was a really fun experience. I stayed a month and it was really, really a uh, fantastic experience. And I couldn't wait to come to work every day, although I was exhausted and it was really long days. But um, just the amount of the ingredients we were able to have, the wasabi leaves, not just the roots and yeah. things that don't even have the name in English. I mean, there's forget yuzu and other things and sugachi. Yeah. It's just every day there were shipments from his friends on the farms or other things that it's like opening a box of Pandora. It's like, my goodness, what's in there? It's so fascinating. It really, yeah, really you know, it was like a fairy it, tale. <laughs> for me, the most important things, the good ingredients speak itself. So sometimes there is no need to touch it. It's very okay. simple, but it's delicious. It's already very good. And also reaching a good ingredients, good quality products in Japan, in, in the world is number one. So number one, constantly yes. you and have- And you don't need to do much to them because they're just so good. I mean, I can yes. make you a delicious tomato salad in the, mi in the middle of the winter in- uh, Yeah, because Idaho. they have amazing tomato. <laughs> it's uh it's you know it's it's it can be a simple tomato salad but it can be the best uh olive oil or the best sea salt yeah. it can be in japan and have you just need to add a little bit salt. <laughs> it's it's just uh yeah it's incredible i miss it so much uh <laughs> ingredients, ingredients is important uh, yes it's very much key, key element. and so after you were inspired by denmark uh which i also share with you and you really knew nordic cuisine uh, tell me about your most memorable moment uh, with the greatest Rene <laughs> at Noma. What was okay. it? You know, one of the most important things that I learned from Rene, which is a personal thing. This is, you know, you don't go to a restaurant like this to learn a couple of dishes, how to make it. Okay. Um, you can try to learn from their book as well. It is not a things that you learn, okay? You go to such a important restaurants like Noma, Mugarit, Roca, you know, I don't know if there is so many good other restaurants, Madison Park. Um, Asuka. Philosophy, you know, yes, it is. The philosophy and how they work how they start their day, how they're thinking to create dishes, how is running that restaurant, you know, while they, while you work, you observe how things happen in there. Okay. So basically, yes, everything, how to do proper cleaning, you know, even many other things. So the one day I was smoking with Rene and then Cigarette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were smoking cigarettes. And then I asked him, you know, chef, are you making good money in this restaurant? Because, no. you know, when you think like, the people think, wow, he is one of the best chefs in the world and his restaurant is full every day, lunch and dinner, and next six months even full, so. And then he said to me, I remember so well, he said, if I stop working today, I need to find another apartment, a rent apartment, because his apartment was not belonged to him, it was rent. And he, has, he always have the same uh, coat, you know, he, he doesn't care. And he, he told me, he never- These Michelin restaurants, I mean, most of them, they don't make money. It's a fun project, baby. Yeah, he never make money, so basically. Much, so much, uh, I mean, I'm very similar in the way where when I make uh, my own bento box and, and for me, I don't care about the cost and say, oh, but, but what's, what's the cost per sense? And it's always because when you're an artist, I feel like you, 
uh, bring down the business part of you. You either an artist. You or have to. And you it's have very, to. very different. It's very difficult to balance the two because if you're such a genius, then you're thinking more on the creative side and just becomes your life and a fun project rather than let me serve whatever makes money because it's very different concepts. Yeah, if you think too much about making money and doing business, then you're not a real uh, artist. Or, or, <laughs> or you, your mindset was just to be rich as a chef like yes, this. You, because food for me is not about making money, it's about making people happy. And when I worked in Japan with Zai, you actually did rent an apartment um, in very close by so I could walk to work because we worked really, really long hours. Uh, and um, Zayu lived very, very far. Zayu's son lived far and he would take his bicycle and, and bike back home because he said, we cannot afford to live in this area, even to rent. So, artists stay artists. <laughs> yeah, you, if you want to make money, you can open a burger place. Burger place, sandwich place, make money. Outs, but you cannot yeah. serve. 75 courses like Alchemist and, and Noma and think it just becomes, I mean, uh, most of the famous painters, they died completely poverty stricken. It's, it's, it's There's no different. money or art. I don't think they go together at all. Yeah, for me, the first key things, okay, if I have a money to survive and, you know, fulfill my life without lying down to anyone that's for me is okay i think most important things when you leave from this world you left something behind you behind you and let people respect you as a chef as what you do and also giving a hand that you made yes giving a, a hands the, the young people for the next generation to, to look up. put their, pull them and put them up. I think this is the most important things. This is more important than making money. You know, I don't need a fucking Ferrari. I don't need a big house. Uh, you know, I don't stay in the house. I stay in the house, but I spend most of my time in the kitchen. I come in for sleep. My restaurant just next door. You know, I just <laughs> live here. And I wake up and I go to restaurant. I spend 14, 15 hours a day and I come here for sleeping. I don't cook at home. I don't spend do time at I? home. Who does? As a chef, do you really cook yeah. at home? I have nothing in my fridge except no. rosemary. I can show you right now. You want to see my fridge? I can show you my fridge. It's nothing. You want to see the chef fridge? I show you. It's empty. There's nothing inside my fridge. So that's the reality. Look. I think empty. I'm the same. Yeah, yes. it's empty. Yeah, I have a couple of sujuk and some egg, and I don't even cook them, you know, I, I don't care. I order from outside. That's what I when do, I, was, I cannot stand my own food because when I make it, it's not delicious to me. Other people say it's delicious, but me, I, I, ah, it's just not interesting. I even prefer McDonald's sometimes to what I cook Japanese yes. style for my clients because I did not make it. So whatever you did not make is a lot more delicious to you i don't like to cook for myself oh food. i never do never i only cook for other people I, I really don't like to cook something for myself and eat because i don't cook for filling my stomach i order from rather from outside let people cook for me you know my mom always used to ask when i was young i always eat outside after work and then she said you working in the restaurant why don't you eat and so many foods, you have everything. I said, that's my workplace. I can't eat that because during the day, my hunger make me creative. If I eat a lot, that's how I am. The day, cool. I can't I cook anything. I create will never be interesting. You have yeah, to I cannot be hungry. Cook. And after I do it for the clients, for me, I'm not interested to eat that personally. Exactly. Jeff is the same. <laughs> but um, okay, so question for you. Um, so, first question: uh, What are your favorite artists in terms of art? Who are your favorite artists? And do you agree that most chefs who agree with Picasso 
that every art mm -hmm. of creation begins with destruction? I have so many artists that I like, but I like mostly Van Gogh, Frida, I like Dali, you know, I like Michelangelo, even for the, you know, Renaissance times, you know, there's so many other artists as well, which is not only painting, you know, doing sculpture, sculpting, that's which is inspire me. I don't have their name on, in my mind, but really the, the painting and art inspire me a lot because when I see something, I look in a different way. When somebody see this as a glass, but when I look at this, I see some other stuff, which is going on here. It's a glass half full or half empty. <laughs> yes, so it is different stuff. So basically, yeah, artists always inspire me. Music also. What do you listen to when you cook? I like to listen to opera and I, I uh, mostly opera, I might say. Yeah, daily, you know, we always listen to music. We have a really speaker system in the kitchen, proper one. So in the morning, we start with really very lively rock music. And then to after wait. lunch, yes, after lunchtime, we do a little bit lights, classic music. We listen to classic music as well. And, and then at the service time, we don't listen to music. Great curation of yes. wake up to like- And then, and then control, and what do you when, think? We, when we finish the service, when the guests leave, we play electronic music when everybody leave. So everybody clean and party. So then we go home. This is how we this spend our day with music. Yeah. So, so when you're not working, when you're not cooking, what do you like to eat? Give me low to high. Uh, I, like to eat, I like to eat good seafood, basically. I know. Uh, Sometimes I just order, I don't know, oyster from my supplier. I just open at home and squeeze lemon and black pepper and I eat. And then um, I like to go, uh, you know, we call here Ojakbashi, which is like a Japanese robotoyaki. Uh, it's a grill with skewers. You sit down in front of the chef and he cook for you, make a lot of different kebabs. So, and drink raku, basically. This is what we like to eat, you know, after work. And yeah, I like to eat always simple stuff. And uh, I don't need anything creative, just proper food. And also not expensive places at all. I think eating at the streets, small corners. There's always good restaurant, which is established for many years. So I try to go those places in my off days, you know, just really good food, simple. Even I go to Italian restaurant, it has to be small, Osteria. Just, I like to eat simple pasta. With just don't want food. fancy food after you. Yeah, you never, never, fancy food. never. Simple. You know, only, <laughs> Oh, only uh, I like to eat uh, kind of stuff when I travel because part of my job I have to see what other chefs or restaurants are doing yeah. so if I go to Paris I really try to pick good restaurant if I go to you know Japan, you can or, see what they're doing it's uh, Okay. inspiration it's very important for me when i travel my first thing is uh, not where i go but what restaurant i want to go to and that's how i book yes. my trip because if i, I, I when i go to, I to, when i go to the new city the first i start with the market where do the I first go? thing i go i go to market first i see the ingredients a products and also the second thing second day i try to eat traditional cuisine like if I go to Spain or whatever I go, I like to eat the most simple things that they do. And then second day, third day, I go for more contemporary or more, which is uh, top places. And just to see what, 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 yes. uh, uh, what experience you can have from the chef that's, you know, high cuisine because it's also, you know, what ingredients they use, the plating, and it's, it's a learning experience. Yeah, I like to also see the 
ceramic places, handcrafted uh, things that you I got. Yes, the tools are I important. Have, I, I came back with bags of ceramics on my shoulders and I'm a small girl from Japan. <laughs> Yeah. And, and my second passion would have been I, I love ceramics so much. I brought I have thousands of plates in my house, uh, and 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 I've been meaning to take ceramic classes, but of course Corona hit. So my first thing would be to to take some some classes uh, after the pandemic. Um, One of my dream also learning. What would, what would you be if you were not a chef? What would you become? Oh, good question. Nobody. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking a plastic surgeon, maybe. It is, uh, maybe I could, but I never have a second option in my life. I decided, I think uh, I was 13 years old. I decided to become a chef and I never changed my mind. So okay. I continue in a culinary. I didn't do anything else. And I never thought. Somebody asked what, you know, what else what else do you love to do outside of cooking? I mean, do you love architecture? Would you be a painter? Would you become a vet? Other than food, what are your other interests? I think most of the art is interest uh, me and uh, my artistic way of thinking and see the things make different way is always my favorite things um basically you know i i would really prefer to do something related with art and this is you know will be the option and when i have really time i try to discover another artist's people life and how they produce and how they invent the the, the things that they do um but also I don't want people to misunderstand and also yes cooking is an art but actually not only at cooking is contain so many other things okay and culinary and a restaurant such a restaurant like this contains so many things discipline creativity so many so many um, other things so, so many other things I have a new design a project which will be start when we reopen we have set up everything but uh, basically we close down so it, it will it will be it will be an amazing project which is at the restaurant in our terrace with some video and music something and experience places that we are going to serve one of the course uh, at outside so it's gonna be crazy stuff, but everything now is stop. <laughs> so, but I understand during this time to find myself, and I think it is very expensive to live with yourself alone. Why is expensive? Because there is no time that you can stay with yourself during the year if there is no holiday or something else so basically staying along i reason myself and i it pushes think that you reset your mind and think at a different level what yes you what, know how can i make it better and what this pandemic taught me and how can i reinvent myself in a way there is ambition and passion is limitless in my my in my life but also i was just thinking the other day i'm 35 years old and you're a year older than me i turned 34 monday <laughs> okay so happy birthday <laughs> so, um, so we're the same age basically <laughs> yes yes uh, i'm 1985 born in istanbul so me as a chef until now i believe that i achieve many of my dreams and also many of other people's place that they have to be and i'm still working on 
to continue without stopping to master my craft and also doing more. But at the same time, you have to know what's enough and what place where to stop. Okay? You can't continue working with this tempo until you die. You know, there is other people coming after you, so you have to give them a chance and opportunity. That's make you a real master Shifu or whatever. So that's make you a proper mentor uh, for people's minds. You know, I think I'm healthy, peaceful, and also I don't need anyone to, to, to rely on. So there is a satisfaction is important in the life. This is what I learned. I can connect with that, yes. There's a beauty oh. in uh, being able to survive on your own uh, in any situation. There is a satisfaction. And, you know, you can work like a crazy and you never stop. You, your mind gone crazy sometimes. You're going to know, well, you're going to know that you're going to survive no matter what. And there is a beauty in that because you know that I'm going to be okay. Yes. Right? So <laughs> always good things for the people around you. Let them learn and let them improve their technique skills and learn something from things and they made a career i think this is the biggest happiness in my life this is what actually the chefs has to do without ego okay because i think after many years that i learned ego as a chef especially is kill you it's so very you have, and it's a very old way of thinking yes okay. you have to be humble as much as you can to make people love you. This is, I think, the key. I you think can... generation is all about that. I think uh, a lot of new new chefs or old chefs that have uh, recreated or let go of their ego, um, people adore them. And it's, at the end, you want to connect with people and you cook and you, you do what you love and you want people to love you. So there is no, there is no room for ego as a chef. Yeah, whoever you are, if you are so super talented, super smart, but if you are an it's asshole, fine. forget about it. Exactly. So, uh, you know, you have to be a simple human. You need to have that, you know, humanity to, to, to you know, share with the people around you. This is, I think, make you a successful chef. You know, um, this is what I learned after many, many years. When I was like 20, 25 years ago, I remember I had a like huge ego, but after I really- You were just young. <laughs> just you know, thinking unprofessional, basically. But One working- question before I, we separate and I'll let you go. First destination after pandemic, what is it for you? I would love to go South America. Yes, because- uh, I think there is a lot of inspiration there and a huge culture for coming from many, many variety of ingredients and people. I think should visit a place and also in a gastronomy scene, South American chefs are really good and they achieve very, very good stuff. And I would like to go and learn something from there. So. I believe uh, two weeks want to travel around in South America and this is what I would like to do. I hope we can all do what we <laughs> want to do when we go very, yes. very soon after yeah. this. Uh, I, hope so. <laughs> I will, I will, you know, I will do it uh, because I never give up in my life, whatever I do. So I never, you know, said, no, I can do it. So I will do it. <laughs> I, I am sure you will. And on this note, uh, I just want to thank you so much for your time. 
I really admire your philosophy and strength. And uh, unfortunately, I still never tasted your food, but I hope I will this summer when I come to Turkey. And thank you so much on um, being mm -hmm. here with me today uh, on Breaking Bread with Vera Lulu. And I wish you all the best and I cannot wait to see you and meet you and eat your delicious food. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.